It's a fight likened to Daryl Kerrigan's beloved castle. These families say they've not only been kicked out of their homes, they're also being ripped off. But like Daryl, they refuse to back down. Three High New Crescent was a happy home. Dad called it his castle. Everyone's seen the movie, The Castle. I reckon we're the luckiest family in the world. I thought that was a, a, a movie. This played out in reality, right in front of our eyes. But one day in June, a knock at the door was to change all that. My heart dropped, honestly. I will never forget that day. This is a compulsory acquisition. And they're going to take our place and we don't get a say in it. I can't believe what's happening on, on no fault of our own. I don't want to be compensated. You can't buy what I've got. Now it's just all getting ripped away. Meet the real life Kerrigans. It's devastating. It's, it's caused so much stress. True Blue Aussies being kicked out of their homes by a state government accused of dudding them. They're not going to build a train station on my place, but, but they're taking it. You won't believe the reason behind one lowball offer. You can keep that little bit. That's a, that's a fair bit of money there. As we seek an answer to the most pressing question of all. Is this bureaucratic madness or one of the most blatant land grabs we've ever seen? I'd like to apologise for the stress that the process is causing them. We no longer own our property, but we haven't actually received anything for it. Mm. How does that feel, to be sitting here? I can't. Well, I, I really haven't come to terms with it. Mm. I, I actually haven't. I can't believe it. Orchard Hills, 50 k's west of Sydney. Soon, these homes will be knocked down to build a new airport metro line and station. Well, this is my property, and basically the station's getting built right on this, right here where we are. So what they Luke Cole is, is one of several homeowners insulted by the payout figure the New South Wales government has offered him. It's nowhere near enough money to be able to buy a similar-sized place in the same suburb. The first offer they gave us was half of what the, the values were currently in Orchard Hills. The second offer they gave us, they came up 70%, give us an exile, but they're still 30% off being able to buy. It's not uncommon for property owners to believe that their property is, is worth a different amount of money than our valuation. More. And that's completely Rebecca McPhee is the Sydney Metro oh, Deputy um, Chief Executive. She recently fronted a New South Wales parliamentary inquiry into the acquisition process. Why not just pay the owner's market rate? So we based our first offer right from the start on the available market information and a valuation that was undertaken in accordance with state law. You know, what's, is, is there something wrong with the process? At all times, the offers we've been putting forward were market value. At all times, yeah. Well, yeah. It's Orchard Hills homeowners say the government has shafted them during the six-month negotiation period, which has now expired. We've come down twice to try and negotiate, and they haven't budged. And then the nail in the coffin was those three trees. The trees in the backyard are the root cause of Sam and Teresa's angst. That's $120,000 there. One tree. The couple were shocked when government valuers knocked $120,000 per tree off their overall payout figure. There's three trees, so that's 360 grand in total wiped from the family coffers. How their value are priced down that low yeah. To make these trees worth that much and take it off at my family, I do not know. If Sam had chopped the trees down and copped a fine, he says he'd still be more than 300 grand better off. It's my life. It's my family's life, my future. We're not asking for any more than we have. When I drive past, it's, it's gut-wrenching every time because I say I've been robbed. We don't go and count trees. We base our valuation on the area of land and how that land is zoned. Sam Grimer says trees on his property have been counted and he's receiving $360,000 less because of that. I won't speculate on what someone else has said. The train line will be running in a tunnel back below, over there, 20 metres below the surface of the property. Below your property, not below, on top? No, below the property. Yeah. None, not one part of our property is actually affected post-construction. Jesse Vella discovered his land will be rezoned for mixed use after he's gone. 
The residential and commercial rezoning would provide the government a windfall if it sells Jesse's patch to developers later on. They've got foresight in their, uh, they can see what's going to happen in the future and they don't want to, they don't want to let me um, have this property in the future. Has this land been acquired for government profits in the future? No, so the, the land is acquired for construction purposes and that's the only reason that we can acquire land. This is the type of behaviour you expect in a banana republic, not in New South Wales. New South Wales Labor MP Daniel Mookie accuses the state government of a buy low and sell high strategy. More land has been acquired to build one station at Orchard Hills than what was commandeered to build nine stations for the North West Metro line. The government doesn't need this much land. The only reason why it is taking it is because without it, they can't pay for their station and for this railway. The motives behind this are our desire to build this great new infrastructure for Greater Western Sydney. That's the purpose of this. Around half the residents here have agreed to the below par deals, simply just to move on with their lives. They've also signed gag orders preventing them from speaking publicly about this ordeal. But some of the stories are extremely upsetting, with one woman telling me that this entire process has cost her her marriage. If it's going to be lawyers, I'm going to hit them with the big artillery. And just like the movie, this plot is heading towards a costly court case. Have you ever seen the movie The Castle? I have seen that mm. movie, yes. Can you give these people some hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel here? I'm confident that, that the process will deliver um, the, the right outcome. You've probably been told not to talk to the media, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so why are you talking to me? Oh, because for now it's not even, it's gone that far now, it's not even about the money, it's what's not right. And probably it's too late for anything to change for our case, it's probably too late. But hopefully for someone else that's next in this situation, some laws do change and they get a fairer go because this must, it just puts everyone through hell. You hear it too often, don't you? Compulsory acquisitions are part of progress, but governments that take people's homes and don't pay them enough to actually replace it should be on notice at the ballot box.